John that is, is that the colour that they'll be? Well, when they're born, they're born a walnut colour and around about seven weeks they ginger up. They ginger up. And is there a black one, yes, a pure a, black one? Yeah, black and tan dingo. He's uh, in the wild about one in 800. About one in 800. So do they come from a certain area or no, are they... No, no, they're around all over the place originally. Okay. But now they're disappearing, same as the ginger one, interbreeding with domestic dogs gone bush. So this is the great danger, apart from yep. the Northern Territory, where yep. there we've got pure strains, and these and yours. I mean, how, how many do you have all together? Well, I have uh, 32 up at the Dingo Farm at Castle Main, and five pups at the moment. All right. Now you've got a permit for those. A special permit, yes. How did you get that? Uh, with great difficulty. With great difficulty. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? Because uh, I mean, is there, do you think there's been a, a government uh, almost benign neglect to try and just let them breed themselves out? Um. Uh, well. No, I don't think so, because I was, I, I've was i been keeping dingoes 36 years. And when they brought out the regulations, they gave me the only special permit. Did they? Yes. But be, because they recognise you almost like yeah. a, a farm or a zoo? Well, that, yeah, that's right. It was my livelihood. All right. And, and people come out there and have yeah, a look at them? It's, and... it's a tourist attraction. Brings in two or three hundred people a week. Does it? All and right. keeps us alive. Now, now, now this fellow's obviously pretty calm. Mm -hmm. um, he lives in the city. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do they make, the, the, you're not suggesting they make a good city dog though normally? Uh, providing you have the, uh, enough room for them, they're like other dogs. They do have characteristics of a wild dog, they can jump very high, so you have to have very high fences. How high? Uh, six feet with returns across the top, and also some of them will dig out under, so you need to have a return along the bottom. And, and a fair amount of space in your backyard for them to run around. But otherwise, you know, they're, they're just like other dogs. It, but they do, they do require uh, a lot of affection because they come from families when they live in the wild and um, and you have to develop that rapport with them and once you get it it's really terrific anyone who's ever owned a dingo would wouldn't want to own another dog That's true. When you, when you, why is that <laughs> but why are they special apart from the fact that they're a, um, a native dog well they're they're very affectionate as you can see yes. and um, uh, they're also a little bit like a cat you have to win their affection it's not just given to you like other dogs. You can't kick a dingo and expect him to come to you again. But what are they like? <laughs> and this bloke looks terrific, but what are they like around, uh, around children, around families? Well, he grew up with the family, and the neighbours' children come up and play with him. But like other dogs, any dog that's um, not been raised with children and, or if children have mishandled a dog, they'll be frightened. Uh, they don't bite. They prefer to uh, walk away rather than... Um, uh, be aggressive and that's where the term dingo comes from you know when they call a person a dingo it's because instead of coming and confronting and being aggressive they move away yes and this is this is where that term has come from do people recognize when you walk down the street with one of these do, do they do people realize it's a dingo or just think it's a dog not all of them but i've had people come up and say oh, you, know, you can see his beautiful golden eyes say what a lovely dog he is what is he and i say have a guess and so they take a look and they say he looks a bit like a dingo <laughs> So, uh, you say as well that, uh, I guess for obvious reasons, that they, you think they could be valuably used for, for tracking. Yes, well, um, we took our dogs to tracking. In fact, we, we didn't know how to handle dogs, really. And as they're quite big to us, we'd only had a little one. We went to obedience school with them. And <laughs> we had to learn a lot, I can assure you. If anyone's been to obedience school, you know how hard it is for the human. Um, and it was decided to try them out at tracking. Well, I went to a school where the dogs have been practicing for two years and in three lessons uh, he could go and find somebody he hadn't he hadn't known before I just showed him where where they'd stood and say said find them and he went straight running into the bush and found them straight away they were hidden in the bush really you know? that was strangers so that they have very good uh, instincts for, for tracking of course that comes from the fact that they're fairly close to the wild dog they haven't been bred with other dogs yes mm -hmm. can you show us again uh, just um, in, in terms of you said the obedience school what, what do they do oh just the basic things from obedience school if, if you like me to show you he'll took it stay Tuku, come. Come on, come on. Tuki. <laughs> come. Sit, sit, sit. Finish. Come on, Grant, come. Go, Grant. Go, Grant. Go, Grant. Come on. Good boy. Sit. Good boy. Good boy. Drop. Right down. Right down. Good boy. 
these are the sorts of things you have to teach them in obedience school and they feel, look fairly simple but once you start to train them you'll find how hard it is yes. sorry i'm standing no no please no, please that's fine well i mean again one doesn't expect it and also it's a yep. very it's a strange climate here for a, a dog to perform with yeah. all the lights and cameras and all those yeah. sorts of things <laughs> bruce again just briefly on yours i mean why there was a a lot of uh, newspaper tension about when authorities moved and shot some of yours Yes, there was. It was horrific. Why, how many were shot? Uh, well, six were shot. One was killed at Serendip, where they were taken. Right. Uh, five were given to other zoos and five were culled to get the numbers down. But now we're over that, you think? We, we're we're right through over. that period. Yeah. And, and, and you both think that, the, that we're at a stage now with the Commission that they might be regarded as a, as a precious animal and a native animal and given right. some respect? Mm -hmm. Yes, well, I believe that um, the, uh, uh, the Canine Control Council would like to recognise and uh, officially recognise the dingo as our na uh, national dog. Other countries have national dogs, like the poodle for France and the bulldog for England. And uh, what better than to have the dingo for our national dog and um, it's because it's still on the classified as vermin that they can't have it and that took you can't go in trials official trials in the club championships which he was allowed to go in he came second out of 150 dogs but because he's regarded as vermin he's not allowed to go in in the trials official trials which is a pity because um, I think in training him to that stage, we've dispelled a lot of the myths yes, of course. that you can't train a dingo. And you look what Bruce mm. has got in front of the close up there of those two yes, uh, pups. They don't look like vermin, do they? <laughs> it doesn't but, look like vermin. But the conservation it... environment is moving in the next 10 days to set up a special citizens committee to bring about regulations uh, for the keeping of dingoes. And we would like it, people to, there to be special regulations to protect the dog and that they wouldn't end up like, you know, there's other animals, a thousand a month, I think it is, who are uh, put down yes. because of human neglect of them. Yes, all right. We thank you for that. Thank you for being here. And again, tell us where, you're, uh, <coughs> where you, you collect them, where people can see them, if they'd like to come and see them. Central Victoria, Castle, Maine, about an hour and 20 minutes from Melbourne. It's called the Dingo Farm, See and Touch a Dingo. Dingo Farm, See and Touch a Dingo, <laughs> on five of those pups. We thank you, Bruce. Eva, we thank you very much. Would you please thank our guests?